Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. And your Thomas Reed fight? What do you remember about the Thomas Reed fight? Thomas Reed, uh, the most weight I ever lost in my career. I lost 37 pounds in six weeks and I was dead. Mm -hmm. So nothing special about him though? He's a tough guy. Mm -hmm. He's uh, one of them guys that don't really come to win just trying to last. Yeah. This is, um, uh, I mean, you know, I, you know, I don't mean no disrespect to him or nothing, but uh, he is a uh, what they call a um, an opponent. Mm -hmm. I don't think he really tried to really win, but yeah. he really tried to keep getting knocked out. I, I had him hurt, but uh, <coughs> I didn't have enough energy to get him out of there. Mm -hmm. And then what about the Charles Scott fight? You fought him at the Garden. How did it feel to be fighting at the Garden? Oh, God. Uh, did I stop him? No. No, I fought, I think I, I fought the Garden twice. I know I got, I stopped both guys. Oh, yeah, Matthew Charles was a tall guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. Charles Scott was a tough guy. I, I just was on that night. I felt, I felt like a hundred, a hundred, a million dollars that night. I felt so good. I just was on. Yeah. How did you feel about fighting at the Garden? Did that make you excited enough? Um, I was, I was, uh, I was really, uh, I felt it was an honor. I just, you know, wish, uh, it was a bigger fight. I mean, you know, I think they had me fight like first and second, so it really wasn't nobody even in there sitting down, so yeah. it had to motivate myself. Yeah. And, uh, what about the fight itself? Was there anything special, just an easy fight? Uh, was um good fight. He was a tough guy. I remember him being a little kind of fast and um like I said I was his own that night. I was beating him to the punch. I was beating him real good but he caught me with a low blow. Mm -hmm. And I I, I can't remember if I took the five minutes or not. But I just my, I didn't I didn't have the same amount of energy. It it made a difference on the fight and um I, it made the fight go a little bit longer than I thought it should have went. Yeah. Was it the big garden or the little paramount? Yeah, yeah, both fights in the, the big garden. Uh -huh. It was on the undercard of uh, Rick Bow and um, Galata. I fought there once. Another undercard was uh, it was Lennox Lewis, Ray Mercer, Holyfield, uh -huh. Bobby Chad, and um, yeah. I forgot who. Uh, I think it was uh, Tim Witherspoon fought. Uh, Shannon Briggs. I don't know that was the other one. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. So, yeah, that was a big fight, but not, not a big fight for me. Yeah. And uh, then you ended up fighting Derek Carmen. What, what do you remember about that? You said you knew you could. Um, did he surprise you? Though? I mean, Derek had some big wins. He had beat Glenn Johnson. Mm -hmm. He was ranked third in the world. But um, I think he was the best guy in the world. I knew I could beat him. I, I was Derek was my sparring partner. Mm -hmm. I knew I could beat him. I just wanted the opportunity to beat him. Um, I actually want to thank. Uh, uh, Dan Goose's son, I forgot his name, I think it was Greg Goose, I can't remember, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, when he beat Glenn Johnson, I walked up to him, I said, I can beat that man, I said, make the fight, and he said, okay, and, and he kept his word, he called me about a month later, and put it together, so, uh, uh, Craig Goose, I think, real good guy, I always liked him, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, Derek, you know, good fight, I was proud of what he did, in, you know, his, with his career, um, but I knew I could beat him. Mm -hmm. And how about George Khalid Jones? George Khalid Jones, uh, I should have beat, I should have beat him easier than I did. I think I, uh, I wanted to look so good for the fight. I just fought uh, Derek Harmon. I didn't really take too much time off, and I stayed in the gym, and I, and I got a little stale. Mm -hmm. I think I came to fight a little stale, and I think I kind of overtrained, so I didn't really look as good as I wanted to look. 
round that you fought, uh, Rico Hoy. What do you, what do you remember about him? Rico oh, Hoy, I won every round. Mm -hmm. I don't remember him hitting me, but with one clean punch in 12 rounds. Mm -hmm. I won every round. Mm -hmm. I fought the man on national television, and I didn't get the decision. That, that probably hurt me. Between that and the second Roy Jones fight, I probably was hurt more than any other fight in my career. Um, I felt I, was, I, I made a good comeback. Um, I dominated. My count was perfect. I was so mentally strong. And um, the way that fight ended with, with me not getting the decision, it hurt me so bad that it, it, it even affected me in my fight against Julio Gonzalez. Because in the back of my mind, of course, I trained and tried, you know what I'm saying, to be my best and win, but in the back of my mind, I knew I didn't have a chance. At the Rico Hoy fight, I fought Julio Gonzalez. I just couldn't understand why Al Heyman was scheduled another fight in another guy's backyard after what happened to me, the Rico Hoy fight. Yeah, what do you make of that? Like, wh why would why would a manager do that to this fighter? Like, tell me. Yeah, I, cool. I couldn't tell you, man. Strange. Uh, I fought Rico Hoy. It was, it was a... It was a a lot of bad decisions in the state of Michigan at the time. They was uh, investigating, and he set up the fight, and I dominated this man. Didn't win the fight. Would have, you know, it, would, it got me mandatory. I'm thinking with, with Roy Jones, but he ended up getting knocked out, uh, like, I think, a week later in Glenn Johnson. And um, after all that, it took me, it took so much out of me for him to schedule the fight on Secret of Maya against Hula, because that was my next fight. I just... It wasn't my next fight, but that was my next big fight. I, I just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. How would you feel when you when you get robbed like that from the judges? What's that do to you? I mean, so mad. It, man, it, it hurt. I mean, uh, right now to this day, you know, people ask me how come I don't really train fighters and how come I'm not in the game. Well, I just really don't have a real good taste for boxing. I mean, I watch the big fights. I, I love the game. I'm in the gym, I train people, but I just don't want to be a part of it. I mean, I just think that boxing never gave me back what I put into it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after losing, you know, after they took my gold medal from me, and as a 22-year-old, then going to Germany, uh, getting BS by Glenn Mishewski, Eric Harden, Rico Hoy, it just, it just ruined me on the inside. I just, it took something out away from me. Yeah, when you go and put so much work into it and you don't get rewarded for good things you do, I can do that. Boxing is the most dirty game in the world, mm. and I wouldn't wish on nobody. Yeah, that's what Bert Sugar said. Bert Sugar said, "You can't, you can't fix this world. You know? It's just corrupted from within." Then, what, what about the Julio Gonzalez fight? Did anything special about Julio? Hello. Hello? Hello? What is this game? Come and shut this game off, Mateo. And give it to Andrea. She wants to play. Gonzalez fight though. Did you anything? I mean, like I said, I, um, uh, I, one thing I can say, I can honestly tell you right now that I fought myself for a few of my fights, uh, letting things outside the ring kind of affect my um, mental state. Mm -hmm. uh, I was 
so not I I just I wasn't at my best. I, mean, I just I just couldn't get over the fact that my own people would set up the fight. Mm. And uh, you know, I wasn't at my best and I didn't I didn't look good. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was a close fight. I don't think I was losing. You know what I'm saying? The, the people all three judges had me not winning one round. Mm. Except for the Chicago judge who had a, a draw or whatever, but you know, it's just just part of the game, man. The dirty game, uh you know, everybody everybody uh don't have the pleasure of just being that man mm -hmm. that, you know, just get opportunity after opportunity. All one of them guys who had to do it the hard way. And you know, it just, you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's the past now. You know, I just moved on. And then your fight against Corey Cummings, what about that one? That's the last. Uh, I was, I was, I was so charged up and motivated for that fight. I really, I, I put on a hell of a fall. I should have knocked him out. I mean, I think I won every right round that fight. I don't remember getting hit. No, he, he did catch me a couple. Of, he was strong as hell. He looked like he was on steroids. He was, he was a big, strong ass guy. Mm -hmm. and I think I was out for a year, or whatever. But I dominated from round one to. To the, end of the, to the end of the fight. Yeah. And then I couldn't understand one. The, the name of the place where Muhammad Ali lived in Chicago was Half Park? Half Park. H-Y-D-E. Okay, H-Y-D. And then... Uh, yeah, one of the best neighborhoods in Chicago. Yeah. And then you, you turned pro and you were working with your brother and Eddie Cook and an older guy. Who was the older guy? The old guy who was about I'm, to retire. When you first turned pro, you had an older trainer who was about to retire. Who was that? Eddie. Say it again. Uh, Eddie Fudge. Now, when you first turned pro, you were working with your brother and a guy named Eddie Cooker. Uh, yeah. When I first turned pro, I worked with my brother, but my managers were kind of afraid that he didn't have enough experience, so I started working with Eddie Fudge. Yeah. What was that guy's name? Theo I Torrance. couldn't understand his name. Eddie Fudge and Theo Torrance. So that was your first trainers ever? You, you don't want to mention the other one? There was like another one when you first turned pro, was there? Or did you turn? When I first turned pro, uh, I worked with uh, DV Armour. Okay. How do, you spell, how do you spell Armour? A R M O R? M O U R. M O U R? Okay. He was an older guy who's been around for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's DB. DB. Okay, I never even heard of the guy. Yeah, I found him. I work. I moved back to Chicago. I work with DB Armor, my brother, Tim Griffin, Eddie uh, Eddie Davis, mm -hmm. and DB was retiring, so my trainer felt like I needed. He wanted a top tier trainer, so. I went to Eddie Fudge and uh, Theo Torrance. Mm -hmm. And then, um, just talk about the Lathan fight a little bit. You remember? Uh, the biggest fight of my career at that time, um, fighting a man 14 and over 13 knockouts, uh, a great amateur, very respected, uh, he hit me harder than any man ever did in my career. Uh, I had mad respect for him, um. Uh, I uh, hope he rests in peace. He's he not with us no more, but uh, it was a good fight. Uh, one of the fights when I just had to change my style. Uh, he hit so hard that I knew I couldn't try to box him. So I told him I had to go out there and try to hit him, try to knock him out. And I dropped him and took over the fight. And then I got a little careless. He dropped me. And then I just outwit him after that. But uh, one of those hard, most, the hardest hit, hitting punch that ever hit me in my career. And do you remember who you turned pro against and what the result was and where it was? Yeah, I fought in Denver in 93. I don't remember the guy's name, but I knocked him out in the second or third round. I can't remember. How would you feel after that first one? Uh, I was kind of surprised because I had a pro style, but at the time I didn't know because, shit, I hadn't fought in eight years, you know, so I can't, you know, so I turn amateur. But having my first pro fight, it was just so much easier, more easier than the amateurs. You know, because referees always stayed on my ass because of my defensive style and I always took points away. Hmm. So I just couldn't believe the feeling it was without no headgear. 
and I could move around. I felt so loose, and I, I knew I was going to love the pros after that fight. Mm -hmm. And then, um, where were you in when you talked to Jackie Cowan and she said, come and say hi to James? Were you, was that after the I was, in, I was in, I was in, Roy, he was getting ready for Roy Jones. Okay. Getting ready. And, um, right, he was going to fight Roy Jones. It was 100 degrees in his room because he was overweight. Had, uh, treadmills and scales all over the room. <laughs> so I knew he was overweight. And, uh, like I said, Jackie, you know, begged me to come up there and speak to him when I really didn't, you know. Yeah. At that time, I didn't really, you know, he was... He was my favorite fighter as as an amateur. Mm -hmm. I had to spar with him and moving up in ranks, you know, you got to start looking at fighters differently because, you know, y'all might face each other. So that's pretty much how I looked at him. And I'm sure pretty much how he looked at me because he basically didn't even talk to me when I came in there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she told me, oh, James, I'd love to see you. And as soon as I get there, she told me, well, Montel really wanted to see you. And I'm like, well, I'm like, what? I'm like, I didn't want to come up here. <laughs> and um, one of my friends, Skipper Kelp, mm -hmm. we talked about it later on. He said, man, he said they knew that day that they was going to fight you. Mm -hmm. That's why he acted the way he did. So it was cool. It wasn't no big deal. Like I said, I, uh, like I got sparred with James the first time. I knew I would never have no... <laughs> No major problems with him because, you know, style makes fights, and I just had a style that could give him a problem. Mm -hmm. And that was actually my next question about Skipper Kelp. You, were you with Skipper Kelp when, when you got the offer to fight James? Is that what no, you I got No, I got the offer after he lost to Roy. Mm -hmm. But I was with Skipper Kelp. Uh, let me see. I just it was the day before the fight. Yeah. I just couldn't understand what you said, like if you were with Skipper Kelp when, when you got the offer, and he that's when he said, um... No, no, we, we just talked about it. We talked about it later. Okay. After I got the offer, we talked, and he said, man... He said, I bet you they knew that day that they was going to fight you. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he couldn't... He seen how James acted for mm -hmm. So, well, I ain't really worried about it, though. Yeah, and that's it. That's all I couldn't understand, man. I just wanted to get you. Who do you think is going to win that Chad Dawson Bernard Hopkins fight? Uh, he probably knocked Bernard out. It ain't going to this. Is, uh, I think Father Time is finally catching up to Bernard. Chad on top of his game. I think he, uh, you know, he mad about the first fight. I think he's going to go out and uh, retire Bernard. Yeah. How about Manny? I just hope, you know, you know, as long as he's on top of his game, I hope he don't take him easy. Take him light like he took Pat Square. Mm -hmm. How about uh, I'm sorry. I think the kid, you know, the kid is uh, one of the most uh, physically, you know, phys physically dominating mm -hmm. guy, you know, just just for his size. Mm -hmm. How do you think a, a match between Montel and Chad would play out? Chad, uh, Chad is a big young guy, tall, long. Uh, that'd be a hard fight for me, no question about it. I would love to fight Bernard Hopkins just because, you know, we close in age, you know, we, 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 we was around at the same time. I fought my pro debut, you know, mm -hmm. on one of his cars, so. Mm -hmm. I, I never even really, pardon mm -hmm. me? You know who might, might want to fight you and it would be a good fight, man? A comeback in Reggie Johnson, Montel Griffin. Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> I, uh... I thought about that, uh, come on. I thought about that, uh, come on, come on, come on. About a month ago, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine told me that he was out of jail. He was trying to make a comeback. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a promoter. <clears throat> they said, where these people had called him, you know, about a fight. And the first thing that popped in my mind was about fighting Reggie. And it just, you know, it tickled me a little bit because, you know, Reggie, I look at Reggie as like, uh, like a mentor, like, you know, big brother, whatever. He uh, mm -hmm. he took me on his wing when I moved to L.A. I always respected him, but, you know, I, the funny thing about it, I never, you know, it never came up about us fighting, but he's another guy who I spar with as a young fighter mm -hmm. that I did pretty good with, and uh, I always felt that uh, I'd do pretty good with him if I ever got a chance to fight him.
You know, he said a lot of nice things about you when I talked to him. So, I mean, he said a lot of nice things about you when I talked yeah, to him. Yeah, about yeah Reggie, uh, Reggie took me under my wing. I mean, under his wing. We hung out. He showed me around LA. I can't say nothing bad about that man. He even, uh, I think he wouldn't get with the first girl I was with. First girl I was ever with in, in LA. I think he even hooked me up with her, so mm. I can't say nothing about the man. <laughs> say nothing about so the Southpaw stance didn't do anything to you? Throw you at all? Pardon me? You didn't have any problem with a Southpaw? With his being a Southpaw? No, nah, you know, I'm, I'm actually a Southpaw. I'm left handed, mm -hmm. but I fought right handed. Mm -hmm. And I, I never had a problem with any Southpaw. Uh, you got uh, Tarva, which just is a guy who, at 6'3, he kind of leans back, and he fights kind of scary, so it was kind of hard to reach him, but. Besides that, I, I never had no problem with no top off. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think is going to happen in the Manny Pacquiao Tim Bradley fight? Um, if Manny ain't slipping and taking a step back, uh, I don't, I don't really, I don't really see him. I, I Timothy Bradley. Now, no disrespect or nothing, but I just. Ain't never, he not really that special to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, his last fight with, uh, shut up. His last fight with Casamayor, who was a legend in my eyes, and I respect him. But, you know, it was way past his prime. He couldn't even do nothing to him. Mm -hmm. And, um, there was one kid named from St. Louis. He just quit. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, Timothy Bradley just really ain't impressive. He's not a big guy. Um, I think... I can't, got caught off guard with uh, Marquez because he, he probably felt he was finished. It took him a little lightly, light, lightly, you know, light, mm -hmm. lighter than he should have. So he, he, he struggled with him, but I know he's going to be up for the TV Valley fight because of, shut up, because of, you know, because struggling with Marquez. Um, out of the two fights, I think the Mayweather fight probably be more um, I ain't gonna say tougher, but uh, more exciting to watch, more interesting to watch. But I just want to see with Cono come in at 54, mm -hmm. Floyd come in, you know, whatever you weigh, 49, 450. You're not gonna gain no weight, you know. He's not gonna put no lot of weight on. Mm -hmm. But Cono gonna be 160 pounds when he get in the ring, so it's gonna be interesting late in the fight. If if Cono try to box, mm -hmm. he's gonna get destroyed. But if he go out there and try to Muscle them and push them around and try to weigh them down. And I think it's going to be interesting, you know, in the later rounds. Yeah. That's all I got for you, buddy. You, you make a good, um, like, color commentator. You know? You talk well, man. Well, if you, well, if you know anybody who's interested, <laughs> give my name. I will.